Hey guys! Today we're making a miniature tiger and tutorial for the rest of the items in this shot can be found on my channel. Really hope you'll enjoy! As always, I started out by making a sketch and an armature. The armature was made the same way as in my doll tutorials and you can see how to do that in my corpse sprite tutorial. I then added some tin foil and clay to the head area and started sculpting the head itself. And just in case you haven't seen any of my other animal tutorials, the eyes are pre-baked and made the same way as in my eyeball cane tutorial. Just like when making a cat, you don't need to add too much detail to the sculpture itself because most of the details come from the fur. However, the bad thing about making a tiger is that without the fur, it kind of looks more like a strange bear type animal. So if you haven't made any animals before, I do recommend making another one just to start with and then make the tiger. To those asking which of my furry animal tutorials I would recommend for a beginner or someone who hasn't made any animals with fur before, I would probably say the guinea pigs or the chihuahua, just because those are pretty simple sculptures without a lot of detail. But in general, I would just recommend you to make the animal you feel the most inspired to make, one of the reasons why I don't take requests or suggestions for animals is that they do take more time to make than a random piece of food in miniature and so if you don't feel inspired to make a certain animal or if you don't like that particular animal, the result is probably not going to be as good. After adding the ears and removing some of the clay from the side of the head, I pre-baked started posing the armature and added some clay to the body. And as always, I did add liquid clay to the back of the ears to strengthen them. And I pre-baked again before adding the paws. After baking, you can paint it using acrylic paint and you have two options. You can either paint it in just one base color and then add one color fur, or you can do it the way I did and then paint the stripes and use those as a guideline. Making the stripes using the fur in different colors is going to take a lot longer than painting the stripes onto the tiger when you're done, but I also think it looks a lot better and if you use acrylic paint to paint on the stripes, it is going to be a bit more stiff, so the tiger is not going to be as soft. However, I did use acrylic paint at the end to add a few extra stripes. For the fur, I used two shades of merino and then white angora, all of which are cruelty free. And if you have any questions about the fur I use, where I get it, the different types and the substitutes, please check out the basics video I have for that. Once the glue is dry, you can trim it and continue.
For part of the nose or snout, as well as the back of the ears, paws and part of the legs, I used flocking powder. I have had a lot of questions asking if you can use flocking powder you would use for nail art. Personally, I would not recommend it just because you don't know what type of fiber it is. And a lot of synthetic fibers tend to look kind of bad for stuff like this. Once I was done, I added some extra stripes and details using black acrylic paint. I used pink acrylic paint for the nose and then I used soft pastels in a couple of shades that matches the fur, as well as black and grey, for some shading. For the whiskers I recommend using white hair extensions, then spray it with a fixative, and you're done.